Um, all right, I'm going to throw the workout in the chat here. What do we need? You need a weight that you can do a floor press with, uh, and then potentially a band if you have like a like a purple band. I'll be using a purple band. If you don't have a band, that's okay. You can use a weight. Okay. It'll work out really nice if you had a band. Uh, other than that, that's all you need. Yeah. Um, so here, I'll explain today. So we're going to get warmed up. And while I'm talking, you guys can go ahead and roll out. Uh, yeah, that'll do. Yeah. Okay. And I'll explain, I'll explain that when we get there. Uh, so we're going to warm up. The end of warm up, we're going to take five minutes and we're going to do um, five Turkish get ups each side in that five minutes. So uh, every 30 seconds, we'll do a get up. So it's just kind of like some mobility and some stuff to get your heart rate going. So I guess you might need a, a Turkish get up weight also. Um, you can also do those unweighted, lots of value to that. But it works out pretty well to be one every 30 seconds. So we'll just alternate sides with that. So that'll be the first five minutes. Then we'll take a, a minute or so break. And then the bulk of the workout is gonna be a, this is like my favorite format. We're gonna do a descending pyramid. So from 10 reps down to one or three minutes, whichever comes first. So a few of these pairs, there's no way you can finish. A few of them, you might get close. Um, but so for example, the first, pair is a kettlebell clean, which I'll show you if you, have, if you haven't done those with me yet, plus toe taps. So you would do 10 kettlebell cleans, then 10 toe taps each side, then pick up the weight, ten, nine kettlebell cleans, nine toe taps, eight, eight, seven, seven, six, six, and work your way down. So if you get to one, then you get extra rest. If, you, if the three minutes ends, we have one minute to rest before the next pair of exercises. And I'll explain the next pair when we get there. Okay, so that will take about uh, 16 minutes. We've got five minutes of get-ups for uh, a total workout time of probably around 35 to 40 minutes. Okay? All right. Well, let's go ahead and roll it out. So if you haven't uh, started rolling yet, let's go. Uh, really important here, let's start on the front of your thighs. So uh, we'll roll out the quads first. At least from what I've seen, I think we don't spend enough time here. Um, a lot of times we go straight to the hamstrings and your hips, which are also important, but I want to start off with this just to make sure we take care of that first. And as you're rolling the front of your leg, make sure you roll out to the side a little bit. So it's not just up and down the same track or the same path. Remember, we want to put all different kinds of forces, all different kinds of angles. You can even roll to your side. You're working on one leg. Roll to your side and roll out the inside of that knee. And switch the sides. making sure we're getting all the way up to your hip flexor or uh, where your hip flexor plugs into your hip, uh, hip bone. That means you probably have to roll one side at a time. And good, let's go ahead and sit up on top of the roller. And we're just rolling out hips. Spend about 10 seconds on each side, just kind of changing the angles, rolling in different ways. We 
Marina, you faked me out. I thought we had somebody else join us, but it's your it's you twice. Yeah, it's me twice. <laughs> okay. Good. So uh, after you roll or sitting on top of the roller, you're gonna go to your side. Let's roll that little space in between your hip bone, like the crest of your hip, and uh, like where you would hurt your hip if you fell on it. So in between those two hip bones there, the crest of your hip and the hip bone that you can kind of put your thumb on on the side. And then rolling that same space like right across your lower back. Just kind of loosening things up there. And if you have any tightness, that rolling can help relax the nerves there. One thing on that, like if you have low back tightness, you can roll that area and it, it gives you temporary relief because it helps to relax the muscles and the nerves around there, but it's typically not the source of the pain. So that's why you would get pain, you know, relatively quickly again. So you wanna make sure you're not just rolling the source or the site of the pain, but trying to find the source. All right, let's go ahead and lay down in front of the roller, put the roller underneath your shoulder blades. I did not realize how much I missed that little roller until I came back to the gym. Uh, did you say you do or don't have a roller? Well, I do have a roller, but it's the one that you're using right now. I love this one. Oh, yeah. So I didn't realize how much I missed it until I came back last week. Oh, it's a big difference. It is. I like this one. So remember that guy that you said you're buying equipment from? I contacted yeah. him today to oh, get good. one. Yeah. Good deal. Uh, okay, so you're gonna put the roller just underneath your shoulder blades or like at the bottom edge of your shoulder blades. Hands will go up behind your head and we're just gonna do a little mini sit up over the roller. So nice and gently, we're just kind of moving each uh, spinal segment there and we're trying to take the forward hunch out. So we wanna think more about letting your head drop down towards the floor. And nice and easy here. And after one or two of those, in one spot, you're gonna move the roller up just a little bit. So think of moving up one joint. And good. All right. Uh, from there, let's just go ahead and lay down on your back. And uh, point your heels up towards the ceiling, getting a nice stretch on the back of your leg. We're gonna hold one leg. So give that one leg a hold and a pull. Giving yourself a hamstring stretch, you're gonna let that heel drop down towards the floor. Tap the floor and come back up. So we're just working one side while we keep a stretch on the other. We'll go for about 10 more seconds here so that you can go at your pace. And switching sides. Go about 20 seconds total here. And relax. Let's cross the ankle over your knee. Okay, two things we're gonna do. We're gonna push one heel down into the floor so we get a, a glute bridge going. You're just gonna hold that glute bridge. And if you need a little bit more stretch, like if you're not getting a stretch in this hip that's crossed over, you just take your hand and push down. We'll just hold this. We're working one side, stretching the other. Check in, make sure your low back isn't getting tight. You should be using your, your cheek to push your heel down to the floor. Five more seconds. And good, relax your hips down to the floor. We're gonna switch sides. Cross your ankle over your knee. 
pressing up into a glute bridge. Use your hand to give yourself an extra stretch if you need it. I'm just gonna hold this for about 20 seconds. Five seconds, two, one, and relax, good. All right, let's roll over to all fours. We're gonna go one leg out to the side. So we're stretching the inside of your thigh here. We're also gonna get our turn in. So from here, the hand of the side that's out, right? So my left leg is out, my right hand is gonna reach underneath my armpit. Close those shoulders down. And then we're gonna reach up towards the ceiling. And we'll repeat this about 20 seconds. You go to your speed. Probably gonna get about five reps in. All right, let's do the same thing on the other side. When you reach under your armpit, you're gonna get more of a stretch on your uh, leg that's out to the side. And good, let's go to a push-up position. Uh, from here, we're just gonna push your hips up towards the ceiling, kind of a downward dog. Let your heels drop down to the floor. Bring your hips down towards the floor into back into that push-up position. And let's walk your hands into your feet. Tap your toes, or your ankles, or your shins, or whatever you can reach, and walk right back out. We're gonna do five of these stationary inchworms. Getting all the way out to that push-up position. This is gonna be a push-up free workout. Yay. We got that going for you. <laughs> We're turning them upside down and turn them into floor presses. All right, uh, so standing, we're just gonna do a two-way lunge here. So we take a step forward, take that same foot, step out to the side. Let's do five of these on each, uh, five of each lunge, and then we'll switch sides. And then we'll do our get-ups. Switching legs. So remember the first thing on the schedule today is a five minute uh, Turkish get up. Yes, challenge. The goal isn't to get them all in as quick as possible. The goal is to get one every 30 seconds. So you may have like five or eight seconds to rest in between each rep. Uh, just enough time to switch hands and get set. Uh, okay. So, get your weight for Turkish get up. Um, variations here. Of course, if uh, you know standing up or getting up is a, an issue, we can just go to the hip extension. All right, so you're holding that weight up. You'll pick your hips up, but you won't bring your knee under you. Um, so, if you're watching this later and you haven't done Turkish get ups, they're kind of maybe a little too hard to explain on a virtual circuit, but uh, if you have done them, we're gonna do the challenge, little challenge up front here. Um, yeah, so we're going to go, uh, starting by starting down on the floor, excuse me. One Turkish get up every 30 seconds, alternating sides for five minutes. Okay. All right. We're going to get started in three, two, one. Here we go. Remember whatever side is holding the weight up that hand is going to have the weight or uh, sorry that knee is going to be up 
And you'll keep that foot glued to the ground all the way up. All the way down. 10 seconds till our next get up on the other side. Remember when you switch hands, you'll bring that other knee in. Okay, ready and go. Okay, 10 seconds till the other side. Three, two, one. Here we go, back to the first side for round two. Ten seconds. Okay, three, two, one. Second side, round two. All right, ten seconds till. Back to the first side. Okay, three, two, one. Here we go, number three on the first side. So we're working our way through these nice and slow. Like I said, the goal isn't to race through them. You wanna check every spot. 10 seconds till the next one. I'm just making up for the one I missed a second ago. All right, two, one, here we go. Always letting the floor support the weight. So there shouldn't be a lot of muscular effort here. You should keep things locked out and balanced on the floor. 10 seconds. Back to the initial, the uh, original side. Three seconds, two, one, here we go. So these give us a lot of uh, opportunity to work on our mobility our stability, okay, shoulder uh, stability, hip stability. Three seconds to the other side. Okay, go ahead. Number four on the second side. Keeping your eyes on the weight. You can make sure you're balancing it well. All right, last one on the first side. Three seconds, two, one, here we go. Okay, five seconds. Last one of these. Ready and go. All right, 10 seconds left. Okay, that's warm up. Okay, so uh, we're gonna get into the circuit part here. So remember, we've got three minutes. 
with a one minute break in between each of the groups. First group, and it's in the chat here if you need it. I'll put it in there again. Uh, the first pair is a kettlebell clean and a toe tap. So the clean, the clean is pulling from the floor, right? So it's kind of like a deadlift where you pick it up from the floor, but you're gonna use your legs to get it going fast enough to pass it right here and come up to here. So you shouldn't be, you shouldn't have to like really be lifting it from here to here. We want the momentum, you should go from here and then you're just kind of switching your grip. It's like you're getting ready to do a goblet squat, right? If you're uncomfortable with the flipping over your hands, so if you get here and you aren't comfortable flipping your grip just like that, just keep it as a high pull. Okay, so we could tap the floor, pulling up into a high pull or the whole clean where you're catching it kind of in that goblet hold grip, okay? Uh, the toe tap, the weight will go right to the floor, put one toe on top, and we switch. So it's anywhere in between this and just a march where you're tapping your toe. Okay, so depending on how fast you're going with these, you might finish all these reps. You also might run up against the three minute clock. Either way, we're getting a lot of work done. Okay, so those two exercises, we'll have a minute break in between where I'll ex explain the next two and we'll get moving from there. All right, any questions before we go? Okay. Uh, all right, so three minutes to work, starting in three, two, one. Here we go, starting off with 10 reps, working your way down to one, maybe. Toe taps are 10 each. One minute down, two minutes to go. Making sure you're keeping that good deadlift form. Legs should be doing a lot of the work. We're just past halfway there, a minute 25 left. Your clean might look a little bit like a squat, like meaning your chest is forward, that's okay. One minute left. Twenty five seconds. Ten seconds. Three, two, one, and relax. All right, while you're resting. Next two exercises, a cross body mountain climber. 
So you're gonna be in a push-up position. You're gonna bring this knee up to your opposite elbow and opposite elbow. This is gonna be more of a march. You should not run this one out. All right, so if I'm here, I'll bring my opposite knee up to touch, opposite knee up to touch, working back and forth. Roll right over to uh, a floor press. So we're pressing 10 times on one side, just like a bench press, but on the floor, pressing up just like this, 10 times each side, roll right over back to the mountain climber. Okay, 10 seconds to rest. Five, four, three, two, and one. Here we go. These are both gonna be a little bit time consuming. So don't be surprised if you only get to like sevens or eights. Your floor press weight might be different from your squat weight, so keep that in mind if you have that luxury at home. One minute down, two to go. Halfway there, minute and a half to go. Just under a minute to go. Twenty five seconds left. Three, two, one, and time. All right, so I only got to eights on that one. No big deal, it's just uh, a matter of how time consuming the exercise is. All right, so for this one, the band that you have, you're gonna put your feet wide and step on it. So your band, you just lay it on the floor. If it's a, if it's a round band, you'll step into it and spread it apart with your feet. All right, so we're gonna go lateral squats, alternating. Okay, for 10 each side. Then we're gonna put the weight down, bend right over, grab the band in between your feet, grab both bands, and you're pulling your elbows up to the ceiling. So two hands at a time here, put the band down, grab your weight, right back into the lateral squats. Okay, so if your band doesn't have a loop, just stretch it out there with your feet and step on it. Okay, off we go. Lateral squats and band rows.
You can either hold the weight down like this if you have back stuff, or we can go up top if you're all clear with this hold. Halfway there. Fifty five seconds left, just under a minute. Thirty seconds left. might find that the rows get challenging. You should uh, feel that in the back of your legs, not in your low back. So try to shift your weight backwards as far as you can. Five seconds. And rest, one minute left, or one minute to rest, and into our final group. Jumping jacks. Okay, so feet are out. When feet are out, hands are out. One way to modify those if jumping is not a thing for you is just put one out at a time. Every time your hands go up, we're tapping out to the side. For those, we just count every time your hands go up. And shoulder taps, back to that push-up position and tapping your shoulder. So it's all about keeping a nice steady plank even when your hand is off the floor. Okay, so that's 10 each side, 10 jumping jacks. We work our way down. Might have a chance to finish this one if you're quick. We're done with the weights. Last three minutes of work. In three, two, one, here we go. Make sure on your shoulder taps that we're not shifting your weight side to side. Shouldn't be going back and forth. We want to lock that up right in the middle. Is it 
too many jumping jacks. Halfway there, a minute and a half left. One minute left. Forty seconds left. Twenty five. Ten seconds. Three, two, one, and done. Okay. That's a wrap for tonight. We're going to do a quick three-minute breathing session. We're going to start off on the floor, either seated or lying down on your back, whichever one you feel more comfortable with right now. Really just checking in with your heart rate. You may be able to feel it in your chest, you may be able to feel it in your throat. So wherever you get that, try to quiet everything else down. Should be starting to hear that coming down now. Feel it coming down. And when your breath gets to the point where you can really control your breath, you can start to count heartbeats and breathe with maybe six to eight beats, depending on how fast your heart rate is. So six in, six out. Pretty soon what you'll notice is those six become longer and longer. So if you need to adjust, go ahead. So what we're doing is trying to take sort of conscious control of our heart rate and bring it down. We wanna to try to recover 50 beats in the first minute or minute and a half or so. So if your heart rate was up at 180, you wanna bring it down to about 150, or sorry, 130 in the first minute or so. Let's take another five breaths. Then we'll move up one position. Make sure however you're positioned right now, that you're not slumping forward. We wanna be as long as you can from your tailbone up to the top of your head. Getting as tall as you can. Anything else is just uh, crunching down and kind of taking away space for air. All right, so if you're lying on your back, go ahead and come up to a seated position. If you're seated, go ahead and stand up. Just check our posture. Again, just kind of as a visual, we want your upper body to be Kind of as big as possible like this water bottle. So anytime you're hunching over, it's like pinching this water bottle in. You'd see the water rise, maybe the top would pop off. We're just taking away space to breathe into. So we want to stay big and tall and round through the middle like this water bottle. So you have lots of space to breathe into. 
that same thing, that same position can be achieved here. So resting with your hands on your knees is still okay. You're not actually rounded over, taking away airspace. You're pushing your hips back, keeping your back flat. So you're still tall from your tailbone to the top of your head. So just taking a second here to get five more good breaths in. Again, checking in with your heart rate. If you wear a heart rate monitor, it's a lot easier to see that those beats per minute drop. If you don't have a heart rate monitor, wear a heart rate monitor, you might have to do it the old fashioned way. It's a good way to check your conditioning. How long does it recover? How long does it take you to get that 50 beats back? And the good, the best way to work on that would be kind of interval stuff, just like we're doing. Okay. That's a wrap. You guys all right? How was that? That go okay for you guys? That's good for me. Okay. You guys have a fantastic rest of your evening and I'll be back on at 7 a.m. if anybody wants to see us. See ya. All right. Thanks guys. Bye Brian. Bye.